in the darkness of the bleak, horrifying future, a slavering horde too numerous to count, with an appetite to match, inexorably advances through the civilised systems of humanity's empire. It does not cut through void territory like some conquering army, but rather it wholly consumes all before it, like fertile agricultural land laid helpless before a sea of locusts. Imperial planets are stripped of all life. Billions perish in horrific harvests of flesh. Their cries of fear and pain or pleads for aid are not heard in the deathly quiet of space. In the wake of such a vast sea of claws and teeth, as if the visage of such beasts was not terrifying enough, before their advance, planetary populations are infected with maddening nightmares whilst all astropathic communication is silenced when the creature's baleful shadow is cast over a local system. Are predatory advantages such as these unnatural steps in some unholy Xenos evolution? Or are these beasts engineered by some insane, unknowable intellect, their awful appetite offset by this shadow in the warp they project? whilst entire armadas of living bioships are eliminated piecemeal by avenging imperial naval fleets. The immense organism that is the Tyranid race barely registers these losses. So numerous are they. Within only a few centuries since first contact, the Tyranid race has captured the entire Milky Way galaxy in its vice-like jaws. Whilst mankind's greatest enemy, the Dark Pantheon, has split the galaxy in two. Ravenous eyes observe the deep void as a cantina patron peruses a buffet, selecting which dish to sample first. This galaxy is home to so many disparate, warring civilizations that, even if a concerted effort by some were to be mounted against the wall of bio vessels, there would still be little hope for victory. What we know of the beast which is the Tyranid organism has been gleaned through the clash of arms on a thousand different worlds, as well as through the tireless devotion of our hallowed institutions. Brave and learned foundations, such as the divisions Biologus of the Holy Mechanicus, have come to many conclusions which aid our strategic understanding, unbeknownst to all but those of the highest authority. Select Magos have had ample opportunity to dissect many a Tyranid specimen, not to mention observe distinct smaller beasts live in captivity. The latter proving particularly disastrous on select instances. Before we continue with our chronicle of Tyranid threat projections, not only upon humanity but also the lesser denizens of this galaxy, make sure please that you, loyal citizen, interact with this vidlog. Your effort is much appreciated as it helps to spread the glorious word of our varied texts. Not only this, but by subscribing to our Vox channel, you are guaranteed weekly entertainment at no cost. Though for those who do wish to support us in this way, allowing us to spend more time creating content away from the slave-like conditions of the Manufactoria, a link to Patreon is contained within each vidlog description and opening it will display what you receive within each tier of support. Thank you. More recently within the era Indomitus of which we are so blessed to participate in, throughout the Segmentum Pacificus and mighty Sanctus line, word reaches us that members of the Primaris Apothecary Biologus, a more contemporary order of the Astartes Apothecary classification, have in fact acquired samples of newly identified Tyranid organisms in the form of parasites. These were first sighted within the frighteningly formidable Xenos host coded Leviathan, enroaching upon his most holy of realms to the galactic west. It seems these parasites, which are attached to larger Xenos breeds, such as those coded Gaunt, possess the ability to distort or maybe even block entirely radio signals, thus ensuring communication between Vox channels whilst engaged with this foe is rendered confused or useless entirely. They have also been proven in field to secrete a pheromone or perhaps even projecting a psychic signal, which is responsible for elevating the aggression of Tyranid organisms within its sphere of influence. 
Surely such warrior beasts as those belonging to the Tyranid race are in no need of hyper-aggressive stimulants, considering how vicious they have already proven to be. This is fascinating new research from the front lines of our ongoing effort against this foul race, which we hope holds the key to reversing or inhibiting Tyranid hive mind influence from medium to larger organisms. If this signal can be reverse engineered, the hope to stem the tide of creatures bleeding forth from the edge of the galaxy may yet be discovered. These samples and all up-to-date research regarding them are currently in the safe keeping of the Ultramarines chapter cohort whose duty it is to defend the Sanctus line within Segmentum Pacificus. As we know now though, this mighty defensive line has been breached. These last marines, those of only a handful of survivors from the world of Regium. No matter the cost, they must be kept safe and out of harm's way. Something more easily said than fulfilled, given the numbers of Tyranid Void assets which now prowl that area of space. This greater tendril of the loathed Leviathan Swarm, it would seem, has its eyes set on the Emperor's westerly realms, though one must consider these beasts' proximity to Segmentum Solar, the hallowed home to Terra and the Emperor himself, and wonder whether a greater scheme is being enacted by these Xenos, who so many claim to be but mindless beasts. Before exploring the implications of a Tyranid invasion of the throne world, however, you may be surprised to learn that the predatory behavioural patterns these creatures follow have ensured they already exist in some numbers upon the throne world, and that these damnable creatures could in fact be laying the foundations within Segmentum Solar for a much more formidable Tyranid presence. A possibility which is being proven more likely with every passing report or last contact from the world's maintaining the Sanctus Line. When commencing systematic incursion, we are aware the Tyranid race uses scout organisms such as those coded Gene Stealer or the various Lictor variants to infiltrate and destabilise prey worlds prior to a tendril thrust. Given the close proximity of the most recent Leviathan Swarm and the coinciding rumours of cultist activity on the throne world, these are worrying portents indeed. Though many of high office within those more secretive or hallowed of imperial institutions, such as the Inquisition or Ecclesiarchy, would be swift in their stifling of rumours suggesting Tyranid bioforms have already made their way to the throne world, I feel that it is your right as a citizen of the Imperium to know that this has already occurred. Exact details of events which did transpire on Terra are scarce indeed, as can be expected when reticent mercurial agents of the Adeptus Custodes and Inquisition intercept and seal vital intelligence relating to such matters. They are like a particularly aggressive and fast-moving disease, one which infects its prey such as the target planet. Small symptoms are exhibited firstly until finally a death blow is revealed, the host only realising the extent of the danger when it is too late to excise it successfully and wholly. There are many loyal citizens and officials alike who believe the throne world impervious to such ponderous, purposeful advancements such as those void creatures of the Tyranid race. Those organisms whose purpose is infiltration may prove minute enough to escape the wider cast nets of the Imperium's defences. The bioform coded Lictor, as well as its many variants, including the Death Leaper, may find some success blending into the dark spires and grisly catacombs of Terra's cities and long forgotten cavernous underbelly. As we know, void and military assets in general are thin indeed. Throughout the entirety of the Imperium Sanctus, the title given to half the galaxy which remains under Imperial rule, following its division by the War Master of Chaos, Abaddon the Despoiler, billions of righteous, brave souls have been dispatched on system-purging crusades, piercing deep into the twilight which is the Imperium Nihilus, in an effort to bring deliverance, or perhaps salvation, to the poor souls trapped there. This is a mighty undertaking indeed, 
though it scarcely leaves credible resources to not only hold back the tide of chaos spilling forth out of the galaxy-wide rent in real space, it also starves the remaining Imperium territories within Imperium Sanctus of aid against the threat of the Xenos, the greatest of which is now the Tyranid invasion of High Fleet Leviathan, the most numerous Tyranid invasion to ever reach the Milky Way. Rumour abounds that remarks have been made by none other than ranking Ultramarine Captains that were the Tyranid Leviathan forces amassing against the Sanctus Line to break through, that Rebute Gilliman himself would be required to turn his attention from his ongoing battle against the forces of the Primordial Annihilator to aid in Segmentum Solar's defence. It has also been said, apparently from the same source, that were this to occur, the territories so recently returned to Imperial control from the clutches of Chaos Filth would be swallowed back up almost immediately. So deprived of combat resources would that leave those regions. One could only hope the Avenging Sun can make it in time to aid other formidable Imperial forces with his combat might, but most importantly, his strategic as well as logistical genius. To face off against the largest Tyranid invasion so close to the cradle world of the human species will require a superhuman understanding of system-spanning war. Warriors such as the Adeptus Custodes, the Silent Sisterhood, Astartes Chapters, the Astra Militarum, and the undeniable might of the Imperial Navy must be called forth to stand against Leviathan. Nothing less than the support of favoured Night Houses and the prodigious might of Mechanicus Titans will be enough to stem the advance of this horde. Even then, will it be enough? How many mortal defenders of the Emperor's realms will be lost in a time where every soul which can hold a last gun counts? What do we unwittingly sacrifice upon other battlefields to defend Terra? There is a warrior of old, a sleeper recently awakened, who may exhibit sufficient will and wield mighty armies who could support his brother in this time. The Lord of the First, great hunter of beasts, rallies with his angels of death after recently dispatching his fallen brother, Angron. Rebute's logistical mind is surpassed only by the lion's strategic acumen. This duo of demigods may yet be humanity's best hope at weathering the storm of Tooth and Chiton, poised to fall upon it. Whilst treasonous whispers still persist of great warrior beasts hunting the avenging son himself, Rebute Gilliman, it does not escape sharper minds that perhaps the malign force animating the Tyranid of Menace with such purpose wishes to approach his holy majesty, the Emperor, in the same way. It is very likely indeed that the efforts of the Emperor's agents on the throne world have not entirely scoured its soil of all Xenos taint and Tyranid bioforms may yet remain. One would hope that recent learnings underneath the Imperial Palace with the Dark Agent known as Cypher have taught the Emperor's companions to keep a more watchful eye on their charge, even during times of open revolt and war. Lastly, I fear we must ask ourselves a confronting, horrifying question, one I am sure which has been poised on the tongues of many, but not spoken out, of the dread implications it bears. The Tyranid race, so numerous and so ravenous in their appetite, having travelled the gulf between galaxies, they are an invader of the worst kind. Or are they? Has the hive mind been guided to our fractured realm within the universe by the Emperor's immortal soul light? Was it the Pharos beacon which drew them so many millennia in the past and they have only just finished their voyage? Perhaps every other galaxy in existence has been stripped of all life, providing the Tyranid race with the numbers which now bear down upon us. Or perhaps, the most dreaded prospect of all, a creature far worse drives the Tyranids forward. Something so powerful, the numberless hordes of the Devourer flee before it, rather than fighting a battle they know they will lose. Is their invasion of our realm really driven by a need to feed? 
having run out of prey worlds elsewhere, or did they simply stumble upon us in their efforts to outrun an even greater predator? You know I reply to all comments guys, so be sure to let me know your thoughts. There are several meaningful story arcs kicking around in the main 40k plot currently. Not only do we have the most recent and largest Tyranid invasion threatening Terra, there is also the Silent King's ongoing project we learnt more about at the beginning of 9th edition. There is Dan Abnett's Bequin series regarding the King in Yellow, with hints that Constantine Valdor may yet be alive. There are the ongoing returns of loyalist Primarchs we all assumed for decades would never return to the setting. The Lion has recently awoken, and time will tell whether he stays within Imperium Nihilus, or whether he joins with his brother to plot against Abaddon. There is Abaddon and Vashtor's recent story arc with the Arcs of Omen, Angron's bloody rampage across the stars, as well as Kosalax the Forsworn wielding the Conqueror, and even rumours that the Phoenician and his children will soon be released as new plastic kits similar to the Death Guard, Thousand Sons and recent World Eater releases. If this wasn't accompanied by new in-depth lore, I'd be very surprised. And perhaps most importantly, we have the Emperor himself communicating with his servants and subjects. Plots within the novel Son of the Forest and Lord of the Fallen both hint at the Emperor being slain to be reborn so he is able to rescue the Imperium from the backwards empire it has devolved into, or perhaps to be worshipped as a god incarnate. So what do you think? Are the Tyranids the most immediate and greatest threat to the Imperium? Or no? Let me know in the comments. Just remember we do have a Patreon now, somewhere I want to be a social hub for my channel supporters. You can check out the tiers for yourself, but it includes time for us to hobby together, or game online, or just chat about lore. I work full time, so creating weekly videos from scratch takes me a lot, so any support from those wishing to form a tight knit community with the channel as we grow is appreciated so much. If you did enjoy the content or learnt something new, consider subscribing. Also liking and sharing really helps my channel to gain more traction with the YouTube algorithm. I'll speak to you next week, take it easy and have a good one.